In today's video, we're going to explain step by step everything you need to do to grow your investing portfolio as quickly as possible in 2025. It's going to be a complete structured recipe of strategies that will make your portfolio grow in one year, much more than what most people can achieve in five. Let's start by diving into the first most important concept that every investor should know, the cash flow. I'm not talking about the cash flow of the companies, but yours. If you have less than $200,000 or $300,000 in your portfolio, even if this is the only step in this video that is not directly related to investments, but instead to your personal behavior, it's the one that's going to help you the most to increase your portfolio faster in the next 12 months, much more than by choosing the best ETFs and stocks. This is, by the way, the most important step that made me achieve almost $300,000 portfolio in a couple of years. Imagine two guys, Peter and Mark, that both earn $60,000 per year. Peter spends 50K per year and Mark 40K. Mark saves $10,000 more thanks to simple tricks like eliminating recurrent expenses that he didn't really need, moving to a place with a little lower rent, cooking more at home, or working a side job. Now, they both decide to invest in the stock market. Peter can invest $10,000 while Mark 20,000. So here's the magic. Peter could be the best investor in the world he would still need to make an impossible 100% return just in order to get to the same portfolio of Mark. And if they invest every year, getting close to Mark's result becomes just a decent dream. So my first tip to grow your portfolio is to make a budget for yourself, reduce every expense that is not necessary, and also eliminate debts with high interest rates. Because no matter what your debt is, if you pay it off, you're guaranteed a rate of return on your money equal to the interest rate that you're paying on it. So if you have credit card debt with a 20% interest rate and you pay the balance off, Congratulations, you're now making 20% on that investment, which is the average return of Warren Buffett. Next step is understanding asset classes, because if we want to grow your portfolio fast, we're going to need two of them. There are basically four different classes. We have cash, equities, fixed income, and alternative investments. The first one is cash, that besides real cash, includes investments that can be easily converted into cash, namely short-term debt securities that mature in less than one year, usually within three months. Examples are money market funds, US treasury bills, and certificates of deposit. Equities are shares of ownership of a company, also known as stock, or index funds and ETFs that invest in stocks. Then we have fixed income securities like bonds. Bonds are basically loans for which you pay the principal by buying them, and then you receive the fixed income, which is the interest payment. And the last one are alternative investments like real estate, precious metals, cryptocurrencies, and so on. If you're not close to retirement and you want to grow your portfolio fast, you're going to forget about bonds for now and concentrate on equities through investments in ETFs. The second asset class you need is cash and you need a good amount of it of at least three to six months worth of expenses. This is going to be your emergency fund, but honestly, if you have positive cash flow every month and the market should have a drastic crash like it had during COVID-19, you might want to consider investing part of it to take advantage of the lower price. Next step is to set up your portfolio with the core and satellite approach. This is my favorite approach to investing, and it means having a main component of the portfolio and some satellite ones. The core portfolio represents the foundation of your investment strategy and must be a broad-based, well-diversified, low-cost index fund or ETF, such as the S&P 500 or the total stock market. This is going to provide stability, broad market exposure, and long-term growth. And you can use, for example, VOO or VTI. VOO is the S&P 500 ETF from Vanguard, representing the 500 best companies of the American stock market. VTI is the total stock market from Vanguard, including in over 3,600 companies, which are all the publicly traded companies in the US. The difference between VO and VTI, almost nothing. Since decades, they have been giving pretty much the same result, so you can choose freely. But if you want to learn about all differences between them, you can watch later this video that I will link here and in the description below. Now, after you've set your core position of the portfolio, you need the satellite ones. The satellite components are going to be additional positions that are dependent on your risk tolerance, your interests, and also your age. Since this video is about growing your investing portfolio fast, these positions should be ETFs that carry a higher risk compared to the core position, but can potentially give you a higher reward. And this takes us right away to the next point, which is growth or value. 
There is nothing wrong with any of them, but the difference is the goal you have. Investing in value companies, or in particular in mature dividend companies, is a typical strategy of dividend investors. And there is nothing wrong with it. But investing in companies that give a relatively high dividend yield means investing in companies that don't necessarily know how to better use that cash to grow the company. So investing like this gives you stability, steady income, but little growth. That's why if you want to grow your portfolio quickly, you should lean more towards the growth sector. Growth companies are businesses that are expected to grow at a faster rate than the overall market. Think of firms like Amazon, Tesla, or Nvidia. Nvidia grew 228% in one year, while the total stock market 37%. So let me give you some great ETFs that you need to know. Number one, VGT the Vanguard Information Technology ETF. This ETF includes all tech companies from the American stock market and delivered 45% in the last 12 months and an average of 20.68% per year in the last 10 years. Assuming a 20.68% return per year in the long term, just by investing $300 per month in it, you would become a millionaire in 20 years. Number two is QQQ the Invesco QQQ Trust Series 1 ETF. QQQ is the biggest and most famous growth ETF. In fact, it's been rated the number one best performing large cap growth fund on the market based on the returns of the last 15 years. 37% in the last year, 435% in the last 10. Speaking about incredible growth. So if we invest in growth companies, it's all right, we're going to grow faster and everyone else is stupid, right? Uh, not exactly. 2025 is going to be a year of roller coaster results. And above all, investors that invest into growth are going to have to get ready for some really difficult months, but also some great returns if they have the stomach. If you check the performance of VGT with VTV, the Vanguard Value ETF, you see how in 10 years VGT crushed the value sector with a monstrous return. Same thing if you compare QQQ with VTV. Since 2004, the growth sector has returned 1360% versus 518% of the value sector. Problem is, tech is quite expensive now and so is the growth sector. The PE ratio of the tech sector, which represents the price of the sector in the stock market compared to the real earnings that the companies inside are actually generating, is almost as high as it was in 2000, before the biggest crash that we've ever seen and that brought the growth sector so much down that it took it almost 15 years to recover from it. So this means that if the tech sector is overpriced now, even though I have no doubt that in the next 10, 20 or 30 years it's going to overperform, we can't know exactly what's going to happen next year and it may crash. All that said, portfolio growth doesn't come from picking the right assets. It comes from regularly adding to your investments. One of the simplest but most effective ways to grow your portfolio is by increasing your contributions and automating them. Use dollar cost averaging to buy into ETFs and once per year try to increase this amount based on your saving rate. But never go back to lower values. Over time, these strategies moves out market volatility, and because you're investing consistently, you're maximizing your potential for growth. All right, now, before moving to the next important points, there is something extremely important for which I've seen so much confusion, because one, every person on YouTube or blog says something different, two, many of them say something wrong, and three, all of them don't say everything they should. So I finally want to tell you the whole package of truth exactly as it is. So pay attention. Well, let's say you invest in the S&P 500 index and you've heard from many YouTubers, including me, that in the long term, the S&P 500 has been delivering around 10% returns per year. So you download the free compound interest calculator that I created, which by the way, you're gonna find link in the description of this video, and you start playing with the numbers. Let's say you've got $0 now, you have 10% return per year, and you plan to invest $500 per month. You find out that with these deposits, you're going to achieve a million dollars in 29 years. You can also see it here in the table that gives you the development every year. So in 29 years, with 1 million in my investing account, how wealthy am I really? What can I afford to buy with it? To answer this, we consider inflation. So the real return of our money is not 10%, but 10% minus the average inflation. Here, under average inflation, I'm going to write 3%, which is a good estimate despite real inflation being different every year. If we go to the year 29 now, which is the year in which you get a $1 million portfolio, the cell next to it tells you how much that million dollars is going to be worth in today's money. And that is 
$563,000. Mind that you're actually going to have $1 million. So when you're calculating inflation adjusted return, it doesn't mean that your portfolio is going to be $563,000. It's going to be $1 million, but it's going to feel as buying power as having today $563,000. But there is another detail to consider that most people forget about. Okay, that's true the million dollar is going to be worth less because of inflation. But isn't it also true that because of inflation, also salaries are going to increase and I'm going to be able to invest more than $500 per month in the future? To take this into account, I added another cell where you can write how much you want to increase every year the monthly contribution to the portfolio. Let's say that we can increase it by 3% every year just as inflation. If we move back now to the year 29, we notice that now what we achieve is not 1 million, but it's 1,311,000. And the value after inflation is 763,765. So as you can see, we improved the situation a little bit. We didn't solve the whole inflation problem, but still we're getting closer and closer to the million in today's value. Let's say that I can beat inflation with my salary increases, both because inflation itself influences future salaries on the market, and also because I know I'm going to make a career and I can invest more. So let's say that I managed to increase my contributions by 6% every year. Now the situation is different. In 29 years, my portfolio is almost $2 million, and today's value of it is over 1 million. So if I invest $500 today and I consider neither inflation nor contribution increase, in 29 years I'm a millionaire, but it's actually worth half a million in today's money. But if inflation grows at 3% per year and I manage to increase my contributions by 6% every year, in 29 years I'll have almost 2 millions and it's going to truly feel like if I were a millionaire today. All that said, let's get back now to the ETFs and how to choose them. I already gave you some important ETFs you need to know and own like VO, VGT or QQQ, but let's say that you want to go and look for other ETFs yourself. How do you do it? Besides, of course, following my channel where I always talk about ETFs, both for American and European investors, when you're looking for an ETF, there are a couple of details you need to be aware of. A good ETF should have a minimum fund size of some say $10 million, I would say $100 million. Managing less than this value means that there is less interest from the investors and this translates into poor liquidity and wide spreads. Poor liquidity on one side means that it might become harder to sell in some critical situations. And wide spread means basically that the buy price is much higher than the market price and the sell price is much lower. The total expense ratio or TER, which is a percentage of your ETF portfolio value that you're going to pay every year as management fee, shouldn't be over 0.30%. Usually with broad-based ETFs, it's going to be around 0.1%. But looking for specialized ETFs, you might find some really expensive ones and you should be aware of this. When it comes to performance, always look at least at the performance of the last 10 years. Never invest in ETFs that are too young or that are too specialized or trendy. For example, I would avoid investing in an AI ETF just because AI is cool and full of potential or a clean energy ETF only because I believe renewable energies are going to increase in the future. And you know why? Because 99% of the time, when you want to invest in something particular because you believe it has a lot of potential, Thousands of people before you thought the same thing and the price is already overvalued and doomed to a future crash. Then you should consider the number of holdings. There is not a magic formula here, but as a rule of thumb, you shouldn't invest in ETFs with less than 100 holdings. Another important point is, should you invest in large cap, mid cap or small cap? For those of you who don't know the difference, we're talking about the capitalization of the companies inside the ETF. So the value in dollars of the companies. What's important to know is that the smaller the companies inside the ETF, the higher the volatility, namely the roller coaster is going to go up and down stronger and with less stability. But if we look back at the whole performance from 1994 to today, small and mid cap companies have returned more than large cap. Mid cap returned 11.7%, small cap 10.78%, and large cap only 9.67%. Another way to grow your portfolio fast is by diversifying not only within the US, but globally. Remember that US and international have moved in cycles. The US has been overperforming for over 13 years now, but it wasn't always like this. Considering an average outperformance cycle of eight years, 
we are already pushing it too far with the 13 years. So consider also ETFs like VXUS, which gives you access to international markets. Or if you invest in Europe, something like a core MSCI World ETF that includes the whole developed world instead of only the US. But now, what about taxes? We are seeing how to save more, how to invest better, but how can we also optimize our portfolio growth by avoiding taxes. The way is by taking advantage of tax efficient accounts like your IRA or 401k. The 401k is a retirement plan offered by your employer where you contribute money each pay period and your employer typically matches up to a certain amount of your contribution. So whatever your employer matches is free money and you shouldn't miss it. A Roth IRA instead is a particular type of individual retirement account where you contribute money after tax, but this money grows tax-free if you wait until you are 59 years and a half of age. Two other accounts you should know are the rollover IRA and the target retirement account. With a rollover IRA, you can roll funds from a previous employer-sponsored plan over to an IRA. This allows you to avoid paying any penalties while keeping a tax deferred status of your retirement plan. A target retirement account instead is a diversified portfolio that, over time, readapts the mix of stocks and bonds based on how close you are to retirement, reducing the exposure to risk investments over time. Finally, 2025 is going to be a year of significant change in the global economy. So my last suggestion is to stay informed about market trends, whether it's inflation, interest rates, or geopolitical tensions. And of course, a good way to stay informed is by following my videos. So if you found this video useful, consider subscribing, ringing the bell to be notified of future videos, and be nice and drop a beautiful like to this video. Thank you so much for watching until the end, guys. I wish you a wonderful evening, everyone. And as always, I'll see you in the next video. Ciao.